event tick. If you can avoid using it at all, please avoid using it. But sometimes you do need to use it. I've set up a little bit of an example here for you uh, in where I will use event tick for something that it shouldn't be used for, but it's mostly for demonstration purposes, right? So I've got this little cube over here that is going to bounce back and forth uh, over between two points on a spline. It's relatively easy. You would probably want to do this with a timeline, not with event tick. Uh, but if you have to do it with event tech for whatever reason, don't do it this way. Because what I have here, number one, looks very messy, but it increases the position on the spline by a set speed every tick. But your tick rate is dependent on your frame rate. So if we uh, change that, so this is what it looks like if it's locked at 30 frames per second. It's suddenly a lot slower, right? So if we now go back up to 60 frames per second, for instance, you will be able to see that it's moving a fair bit faster. If we go down to 10 frames per second, don't do this, but just for 15, have it your way, just for demonstration purposes, you will see it's even freaking slower because it's updating its position every frame. Luckily, there's a very simple fix for this and one that I don't see used in a lot of tutorials because it's not easy to visualize, right? But this event tick has a delta seconds pin. What does that do? Delta seconds is the amount of time since the last frame was done rendering. So if you use this, you can actually offset any frame rate inconsistencies and have the cube move at a consistent rate regardless of your frame rate. All you need to do is promote this to a variable. It's really as easy as that. You have a delta second variable, and then instead of uh, doing minus speed, you will drag in your delta seconds, and you will minus your speed multiplied by the delta seconds. And the same thing we will do in the positive direction here because again this is a very bad system that uses event tick instead of just a timeline that reverses um and now regardless of what our frame rate is you will be able to see that we have a consistent let's go back to 60 fps that we have a consistent speed so at 60 fps it's really freaking slow because it's multiplying it with a very low value something like 0.02 two or three or something like that so your speed value is going to have to increase to something like 20 in this case but aside from that you can see it's moving at a decent pace now let's actually put it up to a little bit higher still so that you can really see the fact that it doesn't slow down once we go down into lower frame rates again so you can see it's bouncing back and forth at 60 fps but now if we go into 20 FPS, you will see that everything is a lot more sluggish, but this thing is still moving at the same speed. Delta seconds, people, it's not that complicated. Just multiply whatever variable drives your behavior that you use in event tick by delta seconds. You will have to offset it a little bit by increasing the value of whatever variable you're working with. But this way, you will always have consistent speeds. If you're doing anything related to like physics or movement or whatever inside the event tick, and you really don't have any other way to do it, for the love of God, please use Delta Seconds.